Greetings, Community Church Unitarian Universalist. This is part two of our worship service today. We did uh, most of it on Facebook Live this morning, but had some glitches. We were resilient and we, we kept going, but I wanted to re-record uh, some of the readings and the sermon that kept getting broken up. So apologies that we won't have all the music that was pre-recorded. I'm hoping to just share that later as well. But for right now, let us begin again in worship for part two. So I'm going to start off by beginning to reread the reading by Omid Safi, a religious scholar, called Our Traditions Are Gems Covered in Centuries of Junk. Yes, there are real jewels in each of our traditions, and they are all covered in filth and junk that is centuries old. In some ways, the jewels shine today as they have always shown. There's a light that's too bright to be put out. At the very same time, the filth of racism, tribalism, nationalism, colonialism, classism continues to cover the jewels. There is a jewel inside our own hearts. That jewel, the inner divine knowledge, also shines so bright. It too has to be purified from the filth of egoism, sexism, and greed. Let us wash these jewels, you and I. Let us rinse these jewels, you and I. Let us polish these jewels, you and I. Let us be in awe of our own inner light, you and I. We dive and keep diving into these oceans, picking out dirty jewels. We curate these jewels and think about which jewels, which stories, which teachings, which practices are worth passing on to our children. So many are. Not all of them are. So it is at this time in the service that we collect our offering. And just as we're doing many things differently virtually right now, our virtual offering will be different. But first, our message the same, which is that we at Community Church Unitarian Universalist are the church, are the community. It is what we give in time, talent, and yes, treasure that sustains this community. It is what we are able to do both inside these four walls or inside the walls of a new home <laughs> or out in the larger community that is hurting right now. We do this work together, and what we give helps us amplify that work. This is sacred work. And so at this time, we put forth our offering. You can do this in several ways. One, text 504-370-2659 and put in the word give. That's 504 370 2659, put the word give in and the amount that you'd like to give to Community Church UU. You can also go online to our webpage at ccuunola.org where we will have a online giving link or very old fashioned way, you can send it a check to our church address. So we're not sure when we'll be able to pick those up on it, um, honestly, but we wanna thank you for that gift and so, I thank you for all that you do and all that you are in our church community. That is a true offering. Our final reading for today is The Source of Self-Regard, Wisdom in the Age of Information by Toni Morrison. In all of our education, whether it's in institutions or not, in homes or streets or wherever, whether it's scholarly or whether it's experiential, there is a kind of progression. We move from data to information, to knowledge, to wisdom. And separating one from the other, being able to distinguish among and between them, that is, knowing the limitation and the danger of exercising one without the other, while respecting each category of intelligence, is generally what serious education is about. And if we agree that purposeful progression exists, 
then you will see that it's easy and it's seductive to assume that data really is knowledge or that information is indeed wisdom or that knowledge can exist without data and how easy and how effortlessly one can parade and disguise itself as another and how quickly we can forget that wisdom without knowledge, wisdom without any data, is just a hunch. So if we chart the brilliant Toni Morrison's progression of wisdom in the age of information, right about now, with the uncertainty around the coronavirus pandemic, who has it, how long we've had it here in the States, how long we'll be isolated, I'd say if it's data, information, knowledge, wisdom, we are somewhere between data and information, if that. And perhaps I'm alone in this, but I find myself in this moment fixated on the data. If I look at the New York Times coronavirus map one more time, I think my head will explode. But it's such a need for some of us now control, any semblance of making sense of how we've gotten to this place so quickly, of confusion around once vomited systems being brought to their knees as a country and a world of one illness. And I don't pretend to know at this time what the movement from data to wisdom, encompassing all the steps in between, will be. What we as a country and state might be able to learn, or not, about public health needs, the lessons we might take or not about what community can look like, the challenges we might make or not in a capitalist system that seems to be leaving so many people, particularly the folks who are the lifeblood of New Orleans in the service, music, and now healthcare industries, to fend for themselves. But like the Stolperstein, the stumbling block or, or discovery, that Rebecca Solnit references as artistic reminders of the atrocity of the Third Reich, a regime essential to remember but not memorialize, each step we take right now in this health crisis and each stumble we make, and we're going to have many stumbles, could also be a discovery. And none of us may be re we're ready for wisdom just yet. Some of us are mourning loved ones who have died. Some are ill or at risk. Some are worried about where their next meal is coming from. All are adjusting to a new way of being in the world. But I do hope we're ready to pay attention and in the future to remember what is really happening. The hospital systems that are already overloaded, the tenuous nature of our economy, the lack of care for elderly patients and working parents alike, and also the homegrown online fundraisers for our community members, from hotel workers to musicians, the neighbors who yell across the street to say hello from their porches, as if we didn't do that already, the folks you feel compelled to call that you haven't spoken to in a while, each of these parts is full of information that if we remember, truly remember, might in a few months lead to some knowledge and perhaps one day wisdom. How we were, how we are now. What changed for the worse? What may even be a little better? Wisdom enough perhaps to change some things that truly need to be changed in this country. But before we can get to the big, big picture, like a coherent federal response, yikes, that did not happen, let's start first in a seemingly unmanageable time with something a little more manageable, someone a little more manageable, us. So I'm going to make a broad statement here. We Unitarian Universalists, on the whole, like some semblance of order. Not overly structured, but for example, a lovely order of service, a map of where we're going together in worship, can be a real comfort to some of us. And sometimes we perfectionist UUs will push ourselves and each other 
to achieve that in order, that order in every part of our church lives. A board report, a spreadsheet, along with, of course, spiritual and intellectual sustenance. But we at CCUU have been working over these last few years to grow into our faith through some imperfection, through some messiness and grace for ourselves and each other. A perfect example being our recording this morning and our continued recording right now. So here's the thing. At this moment in time, especially, with so much anxiety and uncertainty, I ask you all to give yourselves some grace. Be real messy if you need it. If getting dressed at the normal time each morning as a ritual works, which it kind of does for me, then I say do it. If staying in your pajamas watching reruns of Parks and Recreation is even better for you, do that. If you have a beautiful rainbow colored schedule of your kids learning each day, major props. If that schedule dissolved into cuddling and watching movies at 1 p.m., recognize there's a need there too. To hold those we can very close. Cry a lot if you need to. Get weird in your house if you want. But most of all, be gentle with yourself. We all want to react understandably in this time. We want some semblance of control. This last week, I attempted to become a full-time AV tech for our church. With the guest minister, I wondered, do I cancel worship, but because my tech skills are subpar at best, turns out that's not why you hired me, or do I messily try to make it work? I, along with our amazing staff and a worship volunteer at CCUU, made it happen. Yes, the audio was garbled, the experience eerie in an almost empty sanctuary. But there was something poignant about simply connecting, albeit online. And here we are this week, another new normal of worshiping from my home. So connection, school, worship, life in the coming weeks and perhaps months will look different. But connection can and still will happen. Here at CCUU, we can commit to calling each other each week just to say hello writing old-fashioned cards and letters to our fellow congregants and loved ones. P.S. Make sure to email me at minister at ccuunola.org if you want to help make that happen. We can drop off groceries to help those out of work or who are increasingly housebound. We can try out new technologies that are confusing and also allow you to see the face of a beloved friend. We can ask for help, too. A friend this week helping us a friend this week and a neighbor who does audiovisual work professionally has spent countless hours helping us at CCUU figure out how to make our recording better, simply because I mentioned how out of depth I felt. We help each other. We don't demand perfection. We do demand, though, as part of the education that Toni Morrison discusses, that we heed data and information, that we stay home, putting the needs of the larger community over and above individual needs, like seeing each other in large, large groups or hoarding supplies. Listen, we're all going to need faith in the coming months. Faith that however long this goes on, isolation, the virus, economic downturn, kids out of school, folks out of work, we will endure. As a whole, we will survive. And... Survival can't be where our wisdom ends. Because this moment in history, in the grand scheme of things, could be seen as just a stumbling block we briefly trip over. We feel the effects, mourn the dead, some of us shaking our heads at what we did wrong, a few others in leadership attempting to rewrite the truth, declaring our U.S. response perfect. We keep on moving. And in this falsely idealized scenario, that stock market, market rises like a phoenix with some imaginary and beautiful green line. All is well. But 
What if we stay in our stumble a bit? Remember what we needed in this time, what we missed, what we did, and why that matters. Discover something about ourselves and the direction this country has been headed over the last few years. Individualism, capitalism, a lack of social safety net. Perhaps we might actually gain some wisdom to do things differently, to be different. Because I fear if we don't, our stumbling blocks will become larger and larger, closer and closer together. We have discovered in this moment just how tenuous our capitalist system is. That food insecurity is just one paycheck away for most people. That is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, we are struggling to test for viruses and treat people's health, to care for our folks. Folks who have had a social safety net ripped out from under them over the last generation. That perhaps humans continued encroachment on the natural world is having repercussions with newer, different, and dangerous viruses. Our reading today from religious scholar Omid Safi asks us to find the jewels of our religious tradition while also recognizing just how much junk comes with them as well. Us UUs rightfully tout our sacred work in the civil rights movement, something I'm going to preach about next week. But we don't often like to bring up just how many Unitarians and Harvard scientists did some initial research for what became the eugenics movement, which supported a woefully ignorant racist agenda used by the Nazis in the Third Reich. Our identity is so tied up with one thing, freedom fighting you use, that we almost feel as if it's a betrayal to recognize something else too. But have you ever really learned or grown by simply acknowledging what you already know or choose to acknowledge? Of course not. Our education often starts at painful realizations, hard realities. To reach any sort of jeweled wisdom, we have to sift through a lot of junk. Right now, there is so much junk. People are sick and hurting and scared. And some, not all of this, is avoidable. We have to acknowledge that reality. We cannot turn away. Not now. Not in a year's time from but in a year's time from now, there will be other things we remember too. Little things in what seems like a big, overwhelming moment. Like how many of us are heeding the science and health recommendations. The sacrifices we are making and will make to support the larger community. How we are showing up without being physically present. What it means to care for your family, your neighbor, your fellow congregant, when caring involves social distancing. The other day, me and my son were FaceTiming with my son's godfather, who lives across the city. As we kept ta talking, and his godfather kept creating any number of weird, uncanny emojis, to Sebastian's delight and to my horror, I kept meaning to interrupt our conversation, to yell across my porch to folks in our neighborhood, checking in on checking in as one neighbor went to work as a nurse, Another chasing after her kid, biking down the street. Another waving and honking from her car. Dang, you really have become a New Orleanian, he said. Yeah, I guess I have. And the fact that we don't need to congregate in, en masse in the streets of New Orleans to be a New Orleanian, that's telling. Hopefully months from now, we'll have some semblance of normal again. We'll get to give a hug when we see a friend or loved one. Dance in the streets closer than six feet apart. Go to a movie. But hopefully, too, we'll remember all sorts of things. What it was like to be afraid if we got sick and couldn't be cared for. What it sounded like when we took walks and no planes were overhead. Who were the helpers in this time? Who took advantage of the situation? Who failed to lead? Who surprised us with their caring and compassion? In our jewels and our junk, our stumbles and our discovery, that's where our wisdom will lie. So we can then imagine a different and changed world that we will then have a hand in changing. 
where people are taken care of, no matter what their stock portfolio. Where we as a community do hard things in the short term for the greater good in the long term. Recognizing that we are interdependent rather than simply fiercely independent. Because right now we have that choice. In this moment, we can pretend that everything will simply get better, whether by summer heat or market forces. Or we can abide a bit in the messiness of it all, holding our anxiety and grief in one hand while also finding moments of humor and love and connection in the other. We can remember it all. Because as Rebecca Solnit notes, memory too can die where it can be kept alive. And who is remembered, and how, and who decides, these are deeply political things. This time can simply cannot be, this time cannot simply be something we have the luxury of forgetting. I hope we all start remembering now. The jewels and the junk, the stumbles and the discovery. Our education begins now. My prayer is that this remembering moves us toward becoming a more loving, compassionate, caring people in our lives, in our church, and in our world. Amen. We will now move to our benediction by Pema Chodra. When things fall apart, hard heart advice for difficult times. Nothing ever goes away until it has taught us what we need to know. If we run a hundred miles an hour to the other end of the continent in order to get away from the obstacle, we find the very same problem waiting for us when we arrive. It just keeps returning with new names, forms, manifestations until we learn whatever it has to teach us but where we are separating ourselves from reality. How we are pulling back instead of opening up. Closing down instead of allowing ourselves to experience fully whatever we encounter. Without hesitating or retreating into ourselves. As we move forward in this week as a community of care and connection, even amidst being physically apart, I hope that we continue to discover and explore and be gentle with ourselves and each other. And I hope too that we come back together next week as we continue as Community Church Unitarian Universalists. So as I extinguish our chalice, I remind us that I am not extinguishing the love in our hearts, the community we build, what we do together. That remains always for us together.